This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to the acclaimed Holocaust and genocide scholar Ross Siegel. Eight months ago, the Israeli-American historian became one of the first scholars to accuse Israel of committing genocide in Gaza. Professor Siegel laid out his case in a widely read article for Jewish Currents, headlined, A Textbook Case of Genocide. The piece's subtitle was, Israel has been explicit about what it's carrying out in Gaza. Why isn't the world listening? Professor Siegel went on to give numerous interviews, including to us on Democracy Now! We need to recognize what's going on around us, what's unfolding in front of our eyes, which is really a textbook case of genocide, with the rhetoric, with the actions, with everything involved. Siegel's description of Israel's war on Gaza as a genocide has now cost him a job. Last week, the University of Minnesota withdrew an offer to Siegel for him to head the school's Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies after two of the center's board members resigned to protest his hiring. The school's decision also came after the Jewish Community Relations Council of Minnesota and the Dakotas launched a campaign to block Professor Siegel from getting the job. The group described him as a, quote, extremist. Roz Siegel joins us now. He's currently associate professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Stockton University in New Jersey, an endowed professor in the study of modern genocide. He's joining us from Bulgaria. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Professor Siegel. Can you explain exactly what happened? And is there a chance you will be re-offered this job? Thank you, Amy, for inviting me again to, to the show. Uh, what happened is that there was a completely regular uh, uh, hiring process in a public university. There was a public announcement of, a, of the job. There were applications. There were Zoom interviews. There were campus visits. There was actually significant community engagement also during this process. And then eventually the search committee um, uh, deliberated and uh, made a recommendation to hire me to the uh, interim dean, dean of the uh, College of Liberal Arts. I was uh, then on the 5th of June uh, um, sent an official uh, uh, job offer. Um, and then, as you described, uh, uh, two professors. Uh, who uh, were formerly on the advisory committee of the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies at the University of Minnesota resigned, and together with the uh, Jewish Community Community Relations Council of the Minnesota and the Dakotas, uh, uh, put a lot of uh, pressure, which was really uh, uh, hateful campaigns of lies and distortions against me, and based on their political uh, uh, position and support uh, of Israel. And on 10th of June, so within days, right, uh, uh, the interim president of the University of Minnesota uh, sent me an e email withdrawing the, the job offer. And did uh, and in that uh, letter of withdrawal, did the 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 interim president give a reason? Yeah, he said that uh, uh, due to the public facing uh, role of the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies and its director. Uh, uh, community members have come forward uh, with some concerns, and uh, uh, the, and that's that was given as the reason for the withdrawal. And it's important to say, of course, that this is a crude and very dangerous uh, political legitimization, right, of a political interference in an absolutely legitimate hiring process in a public uh, uh, university. It's you know completely unacceptable that a political pressure group, the JCRC of the Minnesota and the Dakotas here. Uh, and a political position of support of Zionism and the state of Israel, right? Especially, of course, at a time when Israel is committing the crime of genocide for eight months now, right? But regardless, actually, any political position, any pressure group is not a criteria, uh, should not be uh, the defining factor in a hiring uh, process. And certainly, once an official job offer uh, um, has been made, this actually uh, uh, might be a, a case uh, um, of discrimination, because I'm targeted here specifically uh, uh, as an uh, Israeli-American Jew, uh, and I'm targeting it because of my identity as a Jew who refuses the narrowing down of Jewish identity to Zionism and to support of Israel, whatever it does, which is the position of the JCRC 
of the Minnesotas and the Dakotas and its claim to speak for all Jews uh, in the Twin Cities, which is absolutely false. I mean, I've received hundreds, hundreds of uh, uh, emails in support, uh, including from many Jews in the Twin Cities who say explicitly that the JCRC does not speak for them, does not represent them. Uh, a community letter uh, from within and outside the university in Twin Cities, and again, including many, many Jews, uh, um, have now attracted more than 500 signatures. Uh, there's also a, a letter of scholars from around the world, including many in the University of Minnesota, of course, that has attracted about a thousand signatures, uh, uh, maybe a bit more uh, in support of me. So this idea that the JCRC speaks for all Jews, right, uh, uh, is absolutely is absolutely uh, 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 false. But again, uh, this is this kind of uh, a crude uh, political intervention in the hiring process and its legitimization by the university is extremely dangerous. It, it joins this attack that we're seeing in the academic world that has intensified since October of really suppressing academic freedom. Uh, uh, and this is a very, very dangerous sign. That's the reason that students and faculty members across the University of Minnesota, not only the College of Liberal Arts, uh, are furious at this decision of their interim president uh, um, and are not willing to accept it. And, and among the people who have been su supporting you have been uh, some scholars in Israel who may not agree with your characterization of what Israel is doing as in Gaza as genocide, but still believe that uh, this, you're being treated unfairly? Absolutely. The letter of the scholars that I mentioned that has, again, a bit more than a thousand signatures right now, has many actually, Israel, many Jewish scholars, of course, but many Israeli Jewish scholars in universities in Israel. Many of them do not necessarily agree with my interpretation of Israel's attack on uh, Gaza, but understand the very dangerous precedent here uh, um, and, you know, and are very uh, fearful of the implications uh, and of course, what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, suppression of academic freedom in Israel uh, is in many ways related to this. So I think that's also uh, in their minds. But yes, many Israeli Jewish scholars uh, also support me. So just looking at Minnesota Public Radio, they said hundreds of professors have signed a letter condemning the university's decision. The University of Minnesota's chapter of the American Association of University, AAU, sent a letter to the administration. Um, uh, and then looking at a response from the spokesperson for the University of Minnesota, they said, Members of the university community have come forward to express their interest in providing perspective on the hiring of the position of director of the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies. Because of the community-facing and leadership role the director holds, it's important that these voices are heard. So if you can respond to that. And also, um, Professor Siegel, they're still offering you, what, an assistant professorship at the University of Minnesota, but withdrew the, your um, offer as director or not? No, 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 no. And the day, on 10th of June, when the interim president withdrew the entire offer, all of it, uh, I was, I was uh, still, uh, the provost called me and said that the university is still interested in offering me the academic position in the history department of tenured associate professor. That was in the original offer as well. But I have not yet received any revised offer. Uh, um, so currently what the situation currently is that the official offer was officially withdrawn and there's nothing uh, 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 besides that uh, um, at this at this point. That's one that's one issue. Look, the, the response of the university is ridiculous. This was a completely of the leadership of the university. It's important to say, as I said, faculty and students across the university overwhelmingly. I mean, Professor uh, Painter and Chahot, the two uh, professors who resigned from the advisory board of the center and started this scandal, right, are absolutely unrepresentative of faculty and uh, students at in the university. Uh, and they're furious uh, uh, um, at this because everyone knows, everyone knows that this was a completely legitimate hiring process. It was actually public. It also actually had a lot of community uh, uh, outreach, right, for people to come to the job talk, which was public. People could come and people indeed came, also joined via Zoom. 
um, and, and provide feedback, provide the responses. You know, I met with a lot of people uh, uh, when I was uh, in the campus visits here. So the response of the university as if now, after an official job offer, after a professional and academic hiring process had been concluded and a job offer was made, now we need community uh, consultation is simply in order to blur a clear truth in front of very wrong eyes that the JCRC here, again, claiming falsely to represent all Jews, is putting political pressure in a very dangerous way on a public university, uh, which is absolutely unacceptable. It's also important to say that this is a the, the center directorship. This is a center in Holocaust and genocide studies. It's not only about Jews. What about indigenous communities, native communities, which are very important in Minnesota? What about Armenians, which we have many, many uh, communities of forcibly displaced and refu refugees in the Twin Cities, right? Again, the idea, this, this also is very, very dangerous because it feeds into anti-Semitic ideas about Jewish power and influence, right? So the JCRC here is also doing a very dangerous thing, feeding into this ideas about Jewish power and influence and intervention here. Uh, um, and it's simply false. They had an opportunity to provide feedback in the regular hiring process. And, and Professor, I wanted to ask you about the, the broader picture of the enormous damage done uh, to American universities in the last year as a result of, uh, of uh, people speaking out against uh, uh, the Israeli attack and, and genocide uh, in Gaza. Uh, the, uh, uh, for example, the university presidents hauled before Congress and basically all having to, uh, to state that they believed uh, they believe that uh, to, uh, opposing, Zionist, uh, opposing Zionism is anti-Semitic. The clampdowns on student protests, uh, the rights of students to even hold protests on universities, the mass arrests uh, uh, that have occurred at so many universities. What is what is the impact of all of this uh, on uh, the idea of a, of a liberal university? Yeah, I mean, it spells the end uh, of this idea of free inquiry, of academic freedom, of research uh, uh, and teaching, uh, and all in the service, of course, of supporting an extremely violent state, a state now conducting a destructive assault for eight months on Gaza, genocide or not. I mean, I firmly believe that we're witnessing a genocidal assault. But even if we're not, I mean, an extremely violent assault, there's an, a case of uh, genocide against Israel in the International Court of Justice. The chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Karim Khan, has requested arrest warrants against Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel Defense Minister Yoav Gallant on war crimes and crimes against humanity. I mean, an international outcry. Dozens of Holocaust and genocide studies scholars, not only me, who have spoken about genocide in Israel's attack on Gaza, or at least the serious risk of genocide in Israel's attack uh, on Gaza. So all this in the service of supporting a violent state and also supporting, again, this very dangerous idea that the only way to be Jew Jews today is to be Zionists and to support Israel. And as I said, the actually the the opposite is the truth. It's not that cr criticizing Israel is anti-Semitism, not at all. Criticizing the people who criticize Israel in this way, this is anti-Semitic. This is an attack on Jewish identities. This is an attack actually on people who are aiming to criticize a violent state in order to protect a group facing state violence, which is actually very much in line with the historical struggle against anti-Semitism. So this is a really a world turned up upside down, and in the frame of this world turned upside down, we also see the end of, uh, of the academic world, of academic freedom, of free inquiry, of teaching and research. It's very, very, very uh, dangerous, and that's why so many people in the University of Minnesota, across actually the academic world in the US and around the world, right, within and outside academia, are actually mobilizing now in support of me, but this is you know, not about me anymore, right? This is this has far uh, 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 more significant uh, implications and consequences. I wanted to ask you about Israeli politician, the former Likud member of parliament, Moshe Feiglin, who Sunday favorably quoted Adolf Hitler while arguing in a TV interview in Israel for the expulsion of Palestinians from Gaza. He said, as Hitler said, I cannot live if one Jew is left, Feiglin said during a panel discussion on Channel 12, Israel's channel. He said, we can't live here if one Islamo-Nazi remains in Gaza. 
Professor Siegel, your response and the significance of these comments, as well as Netanyahu possibly coming to address a joint session of Congress um, in July. I mean, what is there? What is there more? Uh, what is there more to say? Right? It's all in front of our eyes. The utter destruction uh, of Gaza. This genocidal discourse. These the expressions of genocide that we've been exposed to and we're witnessing since October. Uh, uh, this is really Israel as a society awash now in genocidal discourse, discourse full of war criminals, uh, and yet the support of the United States in this genocidal state and its attack on Gaza just continues uh, and continues. And of course, the reason is that if we need to come to terms with Israeli settler colonialism, with this idea that there can't remain Palestinians, right, in Israel, that Moshe Feiglin has articulated via Hitler, right, uh, if we need to come to terms with Israeli settler colonialism since 48, and actually even before and until Israel's destructive assault on Gaza, that really means that we have to come to terms with settler colonialism more broadly, also in the United States and in other places. And who wants to do who wants to do that? And that's why we're seeing that's part of the reason also that we're seeing this horrific attack also against Jews right now, intensifying more and more, including against me in this case, right? Uh, because anything in order not to really come to terms to open this Pandora box for the West of settler colonialism and settler colonial genocide that we're all witnessing now. This is the reason that the Biden administration continues to support Israel, whatever happens. Raz Siegel, we want to thank you so much for being with us, Israeli-American historian. Earlier this month, the University of Minnesota rescinded its offer to him to head its Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies. He's currently associate professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Stockton University and endowed professor in the study of modern genocide. That does it for our show. A very fond farewell to our digital fellow, Eric Halverson, and our intern, Soldad Aguilar Colon and Hannah Fitz. We will miss you so, so much. You are now part of our DNA the Democracy Now! alumni. Uh, we're currently accepting applications for Director of Development. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.